All right. Does anyone want to get up and dance when that thing's going on? Anyone just sort of feel like that? We're all just sitting here like, yeah, right up. But some, I mean, I'm feeling like I'm ready to move uh, when that thing's going. That is awesome. Hey, everybody, good morning. Yeah, that was pretty decent for the first go. Uh, we're going to try one more time because there's just something about us using our voices that starts to like shake us up a little bit. We've sung a little bit. We've heard some things, but there's something about us engaging our bodies. So I'm going to say good morning. And the proper uh, polite thing to do is say good morning back. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Uh, hey, Laura, I forgot about those. Uh, I didn't forget about them. I hadn't been thinking about those 6.30 a.m. prayer sessions. But we had youth and youth leaders and everyone coming out. There's a, there a guy, uh, there's, there's one fella, Jeremy So. Some of you may know Jeremy So. He uh, used to wear his foot, uh, like his toe, his toe runners. You know, anyone know the toe runners? You know, those ones that, uh, that are a real big gimmick, but some people bought them for a while. Uh, just kidding. I don't know. No, no guarantees. But anyways, he would run from his home uh, and get here at 6.30 in the morning to pray with us. Isn't that awesome? Come on, that is sweet. So if you see him, cheer him on. It's, it's great. Hey, it's great to be here. Uh, my name is Evan, as you heard. Uh, we're, from, we're from the Comox Valley now. We live there. My family, we can show you a picture of us in case you, you haven't seen us or you haven't seen us in a while. But uh, I come today with myself, with my, there they are, uh, myself, Kendall is my wife there. She's sitting right in the front row, dressed exactly like Laura right now. And uh, I sort of wish she was dressed like Jenny. Wouldn't that have been awesome if her and Jenny like just wore both the leopard print? Anyways, uh, there's my daughter. Our daughter, Isabella, is on the right, then Hardy, and then Nola. Nola is the only one of those that was born in the Comox Valley, not here. And uh, it, that's us, and we're just glad to be here. And I'm also... It, it, the other, one of the main reasons I'm glad here, I didn't even know I was going to be glad about this until I got here to church. Um, did anyone notice the drummer today? Anyone notice the drummer today? Did he, is he here? Is he here right now or no? Michael? Michael? Where are you at? There he is. There he is. Were you here in the first one too? I didn't know if you left just when I started speaking. You're like, yeah, that's enough. I'll do, I'm out of here. But anyways, Michael is amazing. And uh, uh, I just met him today and he's drumming. I used to drum in this church and I didn't look like that. Like if you looked to me, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't look to me to figure out how do we worship. If you want to know how to worship, you look to Michael. Every, he's gone and he's got the biggest smile and the happiest moment. I'm like, man, I couldn't stop laughing and just joyful as he's just drumming like just, just going for it like there's no fear there's no, it's just pure joy I love it and uh so Michael you're just you're 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 building culture with that I just want you to know that and uh it's good we we need that sometimes isn't it funny what we do sometimes like come to the father and I'm really sad and I wish and I don't know how to act in church and so if you want to know how to act in church, check out Michael, okay? That's all we got to know. And then I said to James this morning, like, James, that's an awesome drummer. How'd you guys, like, what? And he goes, he's been on for the last seven weeks. <laughs> he's, like, serving every week, and he looks like that. Some of you are like, I got to serve once a month? Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Michael's like, seventh week in a row? <laughs> Come on. That's what we need in this church, man. Michael, uh, if you ever move to the Comox Valley, we have openings, Michael. We're ready. <laughs> And uh, we would like to have you. Uh, be great. Uh, anyways, moving on. We, uh, I, we, uh, to give you a little context, about seven years uh, ago, seven and a half years ago, we left here. And, uh, and in so many ways, every piece of fruit, that every spiritual fruit that comes out of the ministry that we're doing in the Comox Valley uh, comes from you guys. Uh, we, we, uh, we're really, this is our, our heart is you. Our, we, we were here uh, a while back again and came through the lobby and there were so many people that, there was someone come up to us like, how's our sister church doing in the Comox Valley? And I'm like, you're calling us your sister church? Like, that's awesome. And like, they, how, how, like we just feel like part of the family here. And, and uh, when we come, we've got a lot of close friends. We really love you guys. Uh, we're thankful to be uh, in this house. And I'm so glad for what God is still doing at Glad Tidings Church. Amen? 
He's not done here. He is not done in this space. He's still got work to be doing here. And I think so much of, uh, there's, some, there's some scripture that teaches us that some, if when we are deeply rooted by the river, uh, we will produce fruit in and out of season. And I want to tell you about some of the deep roots that exist in this church because there's deep historical roots, there's deep prayer roots, there's deep spiritual roots, but there's also deep staff roots uh, in this space. Uh, Luke today, who's leading worship, you know, I started coming to this church in 2006. Uh, my parents actually both went to this church when they were in high school. Uh, but I started coming to this church uh, in 2006. My worship leader, who actually brought me on to be the drummer, who was replaced by Michael, by the way, uh, uh, he, he brought me on uh, in 2006. Luke Stones, who's still leading worship today, had started in 2006. That's 16 years in the same place, leading, leading ministry and driving something forward. Isn't that amazing? But, but, but not just that. Uh, uh, our first friends that we really connected with here uh, are Aaron and Jenny, and they're both here today. And Jenny was leading worship 16 years at plus. She's been serving on worship. Park, who was on bass today, I'm pretty sure he was here when we started. We used to be the rhythm section, me and him together. And uh, he, he was here serving at that point, locked in, committed. That means they've come through a lot of different years, a lot of different leaders, a lot of different changes as a church. COVID, all that has gone on. Come on, can you be thankful? for the roots that exist in this church. Uh, at this time, your staff is amazing, not to mention the girl who came up here and hosted you today. When I came on staff some 14 years ago, Laura was on staff before me. She predated me, and she's still sticking around through kids, through family, through changes. She's still here. This morning, when I got up and preached, the person sitting right behind me was Pastor Ron Michelski, who hired me and, uh, and had already served like 20 years in this church, is still serving in this church, and part of what's going on, man. God has deeply rooted some things here, and God is definitely bringing a greater season of fruit to this church. Amen? There's going to be new things taking place. We can trust for that, for Vancouver Island and for Victoria. Come on, the, the world needs the church now more than ever it has before. I need the hope that you carry, the hope that we hear in, G, in the Scripture. We need that hope. We, we, we need the church to be alive and vibrant and healthy and strong uh, for, for the world around us right now. And so I believe that that's for you. We've been walking through a series, and we're wrapping it up today. It's called The Christian Walk. And we've looked at a, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, throughout Ephesians, Paul, the writer of Ephesians, talks about walking uh, with, with Christ and the ways we would walk as Christians and how we would do that. We've talked about walking in unity and grace and worthy, walking worthy and walking boldly and walking in love and light. And today we're talking about walking in strength. What, what does it look like for us to, uh, us to move forward in strength and, and empower and, 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 and feel strengthened to walk forward into what God has called us to? Uh, what, is, what does it look like to know the power uh, of Christ in our lives? How, what should that look like? Today I want to talk about shifting our power perspective. What might it mean to revisit what power, what strength looks like in Christ? The, the power and strength that comes from the kingdom of God is different than the power that this world offers us. It's different than the influence that this world offers us. It's different than, than the strength that we might discover in this world. And so we need a shift in power perspective. We're going to look at Ephesians 6, 10 to 20 to start. Now, this chunk of scripture follows uh, Paul. Paul has just talked for the last couple of chapters, couple of verses, about all of these sort of power struggles and power differences uh, and, and how to handle them. He talks about just how we love one another. Then he talks about how husbands, you need to love your wife like Christ loved the church. Give yourself up for her. Then he talks about wives, you need to submit to your husbands and love him and, and, and care for him that way. He talks about uh, kids, submit to your parents, love them, honor them, even when they're not great parents. Parents, love your kids even, even when they're not great kids. Like Love them, grow them, develop them. Don't just reign over them. Servants, care for your masters. Serve them as, as if you're serving Christ. They're not good masters. They're, they're overbearing. Still serve as if you're serving Christ. Masters, care for your servants. And so he talks through all of these power issues and challenges and, and differentials and strength. And he just continues to put them in position of like, how do we serve? How do we honor? How do we get under people? How do we lift them up rather than try to lift ourselves up? And then all of that, he's about to conclude by saying this, finally. In other words, in conclusion, now that we've said all that, now that we understand all that, he says this, be strong. 
Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Come on. Isn't it interesting that he would say that right then? Wait, Paul, in conclusion, you're saying in conclusion to me submitting to my wife, in conclusion to me submitting to my parents, in conclusion to me serving even when my boss isn't nice, isn't good, in conclusion to me like being fairly, fairly submissive, you're saying now the conclusion to that is be strong? How, does those, how do those go together? How, how can I be powerful and submissive? How can I be mighty and, and walk in that way and honor people? How can I do those two things together? What does that look like? The reality is sometimes we think that power means I need to have influence. Power means I need to be over someone. Power means I need to be heard and I need to be listened to. But the reality is kingdom power in this world doesn't look like me overbearing over someone else. It looks like me coming under loving someone more than even I love myself, honoring someone even beyond myself, and watching how they receive a a message of the kingdom that the world couldn't have given them. We often think that the only way anyone's going to listen to us is if we're powerful in the world. But the reality is so often when we read scripture, power from the kingdom actually doesn't look like power in the world looks at all. It doesn't look like that, that, that mighty hand that we often think of. Verse 11 says, put on the full armor of God. Now, some people have been waiting for this. They've pushed through all the stuff. Yeah, submit to your wife. Ma, 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 ma. Yeah, I'll honor, serve, care for. La, 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 la. Put on the armor of God. Pardon me. You know? Yeah, I'm ready. Where's my sword? I'm ready to chop down some governments and chop down some systems. And I'm ready to, I'm ready to finally... The pastor is calling me to fight. I'm ready to fight. That's what I want. Get me my shield. Get me my sword. You guys all submit to each other. I'm going to carry the fighting part of this church, and that's what I'm going to do. Paul's not separating these things. Some of you are going to be fighters, and some of you are going to be lovers. That's why you guys are the lover group and you are the fighter group, okay? That's going to be great. The church needs all kinds. Paul's not saying that. He's saying when the, when the fighting in the kingdom of God, when you're fighting for the kingdom of God, it doesn't look like fighting in the world. He's saying fighting for the kingdom of God actually looks like submission and care and love and honoring in the world. Okay, but when do I get to use my sword? <laughs> that is using your sword. He says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. What are the devil's schemes? Here are some common ones I see these days. Greed, bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, discouragement, unrest. You know, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just anxious. I'm overwhelmed. I, I, some of us just can't find peace in this world today. Like, oh man, what, what's the government going to do? I can't believe what's going to happen. Where's this going? And where's, what's, what's going to happen? And this new policy and this new thing. Whew, this is overwhelming. I don't know what's going on. The devil comes and he says, hey, I don't think God's in control anymore. Do you? kind of seems like everything's a bit wrecked. Like, I don't know if God can really come and do much in this world. That's the devil's lie. The, the truth of God comes along and says, man, i am still got power. i still got life. I can still change lives. People are getting saved. They're going to come to know me. I'm going to heal. I'm going to restore. I'm going to redeem. And I'm here, and I'm alive, and I'm well, and I'm ready to move in the Comox Valley, in Victoria, in Port Alberni, in the West Shore, all over Vancouver Island, all over Canada. I'm ready to move. I'm ready to move. This is the truth of Jesus. For our struggle, Paul says, he starts not with for our, what our struggle is against. He says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes in the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, in all kinds of prayers and requests. Isn't this an interesting thing for Paul to say? Hey, I want to put on the armor. Show me how to wear the armor. 
I want to I want to fight for Jesus. I want to fight for what God's going to do in this world. Show me how to fight for what God is going to do in this world. Teach me how to be an army or a soldier in the Lord's army. Can you show me how? Uh, yeah, yeah, here's how you do it. You pray. You believe in faith. You live by the Spirit. You pray for yourself. You pray for others. You pray for your leaders. You pray for all the... No, no, no. I want a different kind of... I'd rather... Is there a Facebook soldier out there that I could be? I'd rather do that. Can I be the social media soldier? That's what I'd like to do. I think, I think the best. How about could I be uh, the, 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 the slandering the government soldier? That's what I'd like to be. Could I be that one? That's the soldier that I want to be. I don't see that soldier here. I don't see in scripture, I don't see Paul saying, here's what you should do. What you should do is go ahead and, 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 and tear down people. Well, no, I'm not tearing down people. I'm tearing down the devil in people. Don't worry. That's what I'm doing. Sometimes that's how we act. I'm not tearing down people. I'm just tearing down the devil. The devil's in that politician, so I'm just tearing down the devil. That's what I'm doing. Paul doesn't say that. Scripture doesn't teach that. We don't see that with Jesus. We don't see that with Paul. We don't see that. We, we, like sometimes, I think, I think sometimes the armor of the Lord that we're wielding, that we're carrying, that we're trying to fight with, sometimes I think, man, we, we seem to be better with this armor and this, these swords than Jesus was, than Peter was, than Paul was, and all these guys were, because for all of them, they didn't fight the powers that be at the time. They came and represented this different kingdom and understood a power that, that actually transcended all of those things that didn't require the power of the world, but actually brought in this new power and this new life and this new hope and this new joy that transcended all of those things. He says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions, all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying. Come on, a bit of a theme here. For all the Lord's people, pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will furious, fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am, am an ambassador in chains. Hold up a second, Paul. You ever, I don't know if you ever read some scripture and go, wait, 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 hold up. What's going on here? Paul, you just talked about being a warrior. I need my shield. I need my sword. I need my breastplate. I need my shoes. I need my helmet. I need my belt. I need to do all those things. And, and then I'm going to take a stand against things. Right, Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm also going to do that over here in chains in prison. Paul, I don't think you understand what the spiritual armor is supposed to do. Isn't it supposed to protect you from things like that? Why would you talk about armor if you're in chains? Has your armor failed you? Have you not actually defended? Have you not actually been protected? Perhaps Paul is saying, my armor protects me from a different thing. Perhaps it doesn't protect him from bad circumstances, but protects him from a bitter heart in the midst of bad circumstances. Perhaps it doesn't protect him from the tough things in life. Perhaps it protects him from the, from the unforgiveness that rises up in his heart when the tough things take place. Perhaps it protects him from the bitterness that can rise, can rise up when, when someone betrays you and hurts you. Perhaps it, it, it uh, rises up a resilience and a perseverance when your church makes decisions that you didn't plan on making and, and you, you hold to the unity of the faith and the body of Christ rather than holding to your own particular idea on what church should look like. Perhaps God has a different plan for the armor that you would put on. That no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're in, no matter what you're dealing with, God can still show up. See, worldly power says this. Worldly power says, I have power to control my circumstances. Kingdom power says this. I have power to give thanks in all circumstances. <laughs> Paul actually writes that in a different spot. He says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Wait, aren't there some circumstances that I shouldn't give thanks? Nope, all well, ha, 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 what about when they're hard? Yeah, give thanks and all. Why? Because God is still there. No, he can't be. Look at all this bad stuff that is happening. No, you're only seeing the bad worldly stuff. What's the kingdom up to right now? 
What's going on behind here? What's going on deeper than here? What can you recognize beyond the political system, beyond the family system, beyond the brokenness and the violence and the pain and the global warming or the global poverty or the glo- whatever it is in all of that? Is it bad? Yes. Can God show up? Yes. People of God who are wearing the spiritual armor don't go, oh boy, God can't be in here. They say, God has something here for us. And we can see it because we have the, we have the shield of, of faith. <laughs> the shield that distinguishes army, worldly power. Says, I have power to control my circumstances. Kingdom power says, I have power to give thanks in all circumstances. Worldly power says, people will prioritize my needs. I'm powerful. They should prioritize my needs. Kingdom power says, I'll give up my needs for people. Worldly power says, people will do what I say. Kingdom power says, people will be inspired by the way that I live and they will want to know what I have to say. Come on. Isn't it interesting we gain power in this world? Say, okay, someone needs to listen to me. Someone needs to hear what I have to say. Do you know that Jesus never came and forced himself on anyone? You know, you read through scripture, he doesn't come and say, excuse me, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, I have something to say. No, he just had, he was living on the outskirts of town and people were just coming out to see him like, what is going on? Who are you? What are you up to? Tell us more. What is happening in this, in this world? I, we need to know more about you, Jesus. He's not like, excuse me, I have to go force myself on these people. No, he's just answering their questions. Are you living in such a way that people have questions about your life? Or are you living exactly like everyone else? Something happens, I get mad. Something goes on, I get frustrated. Something hurts me, I hurt back. Are we acting exactly like everyone else? Or is God calling our life to be a little bit different? Saying, I've given you spiritual armor. And I want to give you spiritual armor. So that in the midst of all circumstances, you can act different than the rest of the world would act. Because you're connected with the the true kingdom not the one of this world. Sometimes it's easier to see how people live than, than understand uh, their, their description of it. Paul, probably not far before he wrote what he just wrote, uh, he was in a circumstance. And him and his friend Silas are in the city. They're preaching about Jesus. People get upset. They get mad. Uh, all this stuff. Uh, and they get, eventually they get put into prison. They get beat up and put into prison just mostly because they're just sharing about Jesus and the people don't like it. So Acts 16, 23, 34, we're going to look at it. It says, after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were accusing the government of terrible things. No, no, sorry. Wrong verse. About midnight, Paul and Silas took to Facebook and dealt with the problem. No. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying? These guys, what's wrong with them? They must be confused. Like, oh, what a nice hotel (laughs) they put us in. Are they just being disillusioned? Like, this isn't, no, this is a nice place. Thank you. No, like, great food, chains on my wrists and ankles, rats. This is beautiful. Thank you so much. And they're not, they're not disillusioned. They, don't, they, they know exactly where they are, but it says they were praying and singing hymns to God. Do you know what they're activating in that moment? Spiritual armor. The strength of the Lord. Not the strength of themselves. Come on, the strength of the Lord shows up at the end of ourselves. When we cannot have strength, he shows up in strength. In fact, Paul himself says his strength, God's strength, is perfected in my weakness. When I am weak, he is strong. He also says, when I come and, be, and, and am amidst you, I don't come with fancy words. I don't come to share much. All I come to do is share with you about Christ and Christ crucified. That's all I come with. I don't have anything to offer. I just come and share about him. That's all I have. Sometimes it's in jail. Sometimes I'm an ambassador in chains. Sometimes I'm beat up. Sometimes I'm stoned in the street uh, by, by rocks. Uh, sometimes I'm, uh, like I'm, I'm dealing with all this stuff. I'm shipwrecked. I'm, it's, it's a new world, huh? It's a new world. Uh, he, uh, all, all of this stuff, but, but, but listen, at all of those times, God is moving, and God is using me, and God is working in my life, and so they're singing and praying in prison, and the other prisoners were listening to them. 
Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaking, shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Now, what kind of earthquake is that that shakes off chains, by the way? What kind of cheap old chains were those? Like, oh, just drop off. Just weird. That's a weird. Anyways, God does a miracle one way or another. Like, the, the place is shaken. Chains fall off. They're in a new spot. Like, what? Look at this. We're free. If, if, you're, if I'm them, I'm like, the power, oh boy, the power has shifted. You guys put us in prison. Now our Lord's at work. Come on, there was, you feel that earthquake? We're free now. Get me my sword. God's going to smite you. He's going to destroy you. This is going to be awesome. He just came in an earthquake. Quake. You guys are dead. You know, that's what I'd be thinking. And, and Paul is like, they're, they're literally free. Everything's flung open. Obviously, God has shown up. Now, what are you going to do with your newfound power, Paul? And here, that's what he does. It says the jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. He would have been so dishonored. What Rome would have done to him in that time would have been very bad. It would have been a big, a big thing. He's like, I'd be better off dead. I better just kill myself if they're all going to get away on me now. I can't, I can't do this. About to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. Paul, what are you doing there? Don't you realize God just flung open the doors? Don't you realize God just shook off the chains? Don't you realize that your powerful God just showed his power and now you're free? What are you going to do with that freedom? And Paul says, with my freedom, I will offer myself to be imprisoned for the sake of the freedom of my jailer. Was it because the jailer was a nice guy? <laughs> yeah, he might have been. We don't know anything about that in Scripture. My guess is the jailer was part of beating up Paul a few minutes ago, destroying him, crushing him, smashing him, mocking him, shoved him in the darkest spot, clipped up his things. He, he, he is the part of, he's part of Rome, Rome, the enemies. Paul doesn't get out and say, finally, let's go take Rome. Yeah, let's go destroy the government that put us here. Yeah, let's kill this jailer because this jailer, obviously God's on our side. No, he stays right in prison and says, jailer, if what you need to know the kingdom that I represent is me to be imprisoned in the kingdom that you've known up until this point, then I will stay in prison in your kingdom that you might know freedom in mine. I will stay in prison in your world that you might know the freedom in my world because I'm here not to represent freedom in your world, but here represent freedom for the kingdom of God and to proclaim freedom to the captives in the, wor in the world today. We have to represent a different world than the world that we, we live in. We, we can't just represent this earthly world. As long as we get rich and powerful and mighty in this world, then maybe people will know Jesus. No, it's when we serve and love and offer humility and honor and care and and look after others in this world that they'll see the kingdom that we actually come from. It's the kingdom of God. The spiritual armor is not meant to keep you out of prison here. It's meant to carry you in the midst of prison here to rec recognize the kingdom that you're part of and share it with the world around you. Here's what the jailer does. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul. He's like, this is scary. Was it the earthquake that scared him? No. It was like, what in the world are you doing here, Paul? You could have done anything right now. And you're sitting here, imprisoned. He fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? It's not that often that I get that question asked to me based on my actions. What about you? Based on your actions, are people coming to you and saying, please tell me about your God? I need to know how to follow him because he represents something different than this world can offer me. Is that what your enemy, this jailer was literally their enemy, is that what your enemy would say about you? Tell me about your God because he sure causes you to act differently. He sure causes you to walk in a forgiveness that I can't walk in. 
He causes you to walk in a grace that I don't know. He causes you to walk in a, in a peace in trying times that I've never experienced. Tell me about your God. How often do you have this question asked of you? Do you ever? Are we too busy trying to ensure that we have every creature comfort in this world so that, so that somehow we can make sure that we represent God well by being the most powerful in this world? No, the most powerful in the kingdom of God says I can be the weakest in this world and still be influential and poorest in this world and still shape lives. Jailer, the jailer said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved and your household. <laughs> then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds, and immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, and he and his whole household. <laughs> come on, what could happen if we put on our spiritual armor that allowed us to shift our perspective and live with a new power and a new strength, no matter what our circumstance, what would happen? And maybe today you need that. Maybe today you want that. Maybe today that's something that you want to be strengthened with. And often where that starts is us laying down our old armor, going to put away this sword that's always hacking up things and actually start to use the sword of the Spirit that prays. We lay down the shield that's, that's meant to block off all people that are not like me. And instead, I'm going to let it quench the work of the enemy, which is the greed in me, and which is the, which is the fear in me, and which is the, the doubts in me. What, 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 how can I put on this new spiritual armor so that it, it's not about me finding good and perfect circumstances for my life and making everyone serve me, but it's about finding God's grace and power to walk in thanksgiving no matter the circumstances in my life? Maybe in this moment, God's got something for you. Would you just bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment? Because maybe here you're, already, you're feeling in your heart that you want that. God, I want to lay down my armor that's coming against people, that's hurting people. I want to put on the armor that causes me to be thankful in all circumstances. I want to represent the kingdom that, that transcends the kingdom of this world. I want to know the kingdom of God in my life. It gives me new perspective and new vision and allows me to walk through any circumstances here and now. If you say, I want to lay down my old armor. I want to take up the armor of the kingdom of God. Maybe just raise your hand for a moment. So I'd love to pray for you. Yeah, God bless you. you. Say, I want that armor. I want the armor of the kingdom of God. I want to see all circumstances and, and be okay with them and be able to walk in them and be strengthened in them. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Show me how to walk in that strength, Lord. Show me how to stand in that spot. Only his Holy Spirit comes and arms you that way. God bless you in the balcony. People just laying down their armor saying, I'm done fighting the wrong battle. I'm ready to, I'm ready to just be empowered by his mighty strength not about my mighty strength anymore. I keep finding that I'm hitting dead ends and brokenness. I want to know his strength and his power. As we lay down our armor, maybe today you just want to pray this prayer under your breath. You don't need to say it out really loud and distract others. I want you to have a moment with God. But maybe you need, you need his arming today. And you get armed with the armor of the Lord through his Holy Spirit. And so all I want you to do is invite his Holy Spirit to come under your breath. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Arm me. Arm 
me with a revelation of the kingdom of God. Arm me with a peace that would transcend all things. Help me to give up the battles that are not leading to peace. Arm me with faith that would, that would extinguish the enemy's work of bitterness and unforgiveness in my heart. Arm me with that. Arm me with the Spirit to be strengthened to handle circumstances that are beyond me. Arm me with the belt of truth that holds this all together and reminds me that in all circumstances, God, you are here and you're drawing near to me. Arm me with the understanding that all circumstances don't necessarily reflect you. And many circumstances grieve you, and yet in all circumstances you are there and with me. Arm me. Holy Spirit, come. The helmet of salvation. And first and foremost, my knowledge and my, my, my understanding would be that I'm saved. That I'm not the Savior, but I'm saved. That I have a Savior that will save this world, and I'm not the one who will save this world. Arm me with a breastplate of righteousness that comes only from Christ and his death on the cross that I cannot be righteous on my own. Arm me, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come.